The Sunken Road is a road that had been worn down by rain and travel by people, primarily farmers who wanted to bypass Sharpsburg. Sunken Road runs approximately a thousand yards south and east. Now you can see from the picture that the sides of the road curve up. This is ideal for concealment. The Blue Ridge Mountains run through Virginia as well as Maryland where the Battle of Sunken Lane was fought. The mountains have an effect on the terrain around them. Because of the proximity of the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Battle of Antietam was fought on the Canuckjeeg and Elbrook formations. Like this photo right here is an example of the Canuckjeeg limestone geological formation. These formations are not continuous, but appear throughout Hillcrest. This photo right here is the Elbrook geological formation. It is part of limestone and dolomite. Because of this topography, um, it could be useful as defense because it provides cover and concealment. This photo was taken near the Battle Memorial. Now you can see that these Kohakajig and Elbrook formations, this one you can see is not continuous. It's on one side and not the other. Well, this can affect the movement of the troops. Um, especially if you're not used to the terrain walking and maneuvering through them. And depending on the size and location, these can be useful for defense because it provides cover and concealment. This is a photo of the landscape of Sunken Road. Well, you can see how it's kind of not completely flat. There are hills and sometimes this can affect visibility. Well, you also have trees. Well, you could use these as defense, or you can use them as obstacles. But either way, communication was limited by this landscape. Union troops were not able to keep a sharp eye on their troops, so it was hard to, you know, guide them on what to do. This is the tour of the landscape to Sunken Road from Confederate occupation. You could see that steep slopes were a favorable terrain for the Confederates because they took the defensive position, which enabled them to conceal themselves easily. will be taking a tour of the landscape to Sunken Road from Union Occupation. You will see here that the Union troops crossed through a roughly open field toward Sunken Road where the Confederates took a defense position. The steep slopes and rises in the terrain reduces the Union's visibility and fields of fire. The hilly terrain affected communication because commanders were not able to effectively monitor their troops' movement by sight. Here is a view from the Federal side. Broken and woody ground behind the sheltering hills concealed the rebel masses. What from our front looked like only a narrow summit fringed with woods was a broad tableland of forest and ravine, covered for troops everywhere, nowhere easy access for an enemy. The smoothly sloping service in front and the sweeping crescent of slowly mingling lines was all a disillusion. It was all a rebel stronghold beyond. George W. Smalley here you will be viewing the view within Sunken Road. Now you can see that they had a clear, a clear vision of what was coming in front of them. Here is an account from Colonel John B. Gordon of the 6th Alabama as he describes the first volley of Bloody Lane. With all my lung power, I shouted, Fire! Rifles flamed and roared in the Federal's faces like a blinding blaze of lightning accompanied by the quick and deadly thunderbolt. The effect was appalling. The entire front line, with few exceptions, went down in the consuming blast. The 
road sloped downhill through the position of the 2nd North Carolina, leveled off in mid the 14th, then rose steadily through the lines of the 4th and 30th. The parallel ridge to the north hovered above all this, protecting approaching Federals, but then silhouetting them when they passed its crest. Had the Confederates been equipped with rifled shoulder arms, their officers certainly ought to have fought them from the high ground, not the lane. Given the maximum range of smooth bore musketry, however, the road served as an ideal defensive point. Gallagher. It is important to keep in mind that the Sunken Road was not a straight line of defense, but a winding one. Approach the top of the hill cautiously and lying down, we pour into each other one continuous shower of lead and hell for four long mortal hours. The whole air resounds with the din of arms, musket, rifle, cannon, and shell pour forth an avalanche of lead and iron. Our men are protected by about six or eight inches of the wear of the road, but that is great protection. They fire cautiously and are apparently as cool as if shooting at squirrels, taking sure aim every fire. The protection, however, is not sufficient. The air is full of lead, and many are shot as they are aiming at the enemy, and the groans of the wounded are heard amid the war of the Musketry. Gallagher. Right here is a bend in Sunken Road, and near the bend of Sunken Road, Union forces were able to get, gain high ground and fire down on the Confederates within the Sunken Road. General Robert E. Lee, being ambitious, wanted to fight on Union territory, which already gave a home advantage for McClellan and a disadvantage for Lee. Lee was also unwelcomed in the territory which could limit supplies and food needed for his army. Lee's army was already outnumbered by McClellan's army and decided to further divide his troops. Another disadvantage was the fact that Lee's plans had already gotten into the hands of McClellan. General George Brinson McClellan had the benefit of receiving Lee's plans but failed to utilize them to his fullest advantage. McClellan had planned to attack Lee's left flank, but felt effectively to communicate his plans with his commanding officers, who gave their troops conflicting orders. If McClellan would have communicated these plans effectively, he would have weakened the middle by attacking Lee's right and left flanks. Instead, he took a head-on attack to Lee's middle at Sunken Road. In summary, McClellan's forces lacked a common vision. The Sunken Road served as an actual trench, but turned into a death trap for the Confederate soldiers, so it is also known as Bloody Lane. Sunken Road became an obstacle for the Confederates because the Union troops prevented the enemy from leaving their location. The Battle of Sunken Road is viewed as a tactical draw between the Union and the Confederate armies, but a strategic defeat for the Confederates. Because of the Union victory, Lincoln was able to issue the Emancipation Proclamation disabling British and French aid to the Confederates. The other aspect of Sunken Road is that the Union was able to stop Lee's first invasion of the North. 